Two. I was right. Hello, and <laughs> welcome to week. I believe it's eight or nine. Uh, eight. It's a number. Nope, it's week nine. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Take back here. Jake, you got it. You're, um, yeah, Jake, buddy, the computer. What? What do I do? Oh, uh, you can Being mute really in nice intervals. And loud. All right, I'll mute it for now. That was a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Your computer is like, no, I'm not having any of this right now. <laughs> <laughs> As we're back for week nine of the Blind Mountain. It's been a while. Had to move last week's game due to uh, some fun little personal issues. And the camera capture is off. While I'm fixing that, I want you guys to go ahead and talk about y'all's weeks. Go ahead and start with you, Michael. Uh, well, I... My phone's broken, I had to refresh my entire laptop, so I'm in the process of reinstalling everything. So that's fun. Uh, other than that... Sucks. that yeah. Start watching Sherlock. Great show. Took you long enough. That's a great, <laughs> yeah. That is a great show. Yeah, it only took about 40 people and then randomly running into a Netflix when we ran out of stuff to watch for me to start watching it. Uh, <laughs> I can now see why everyone says that uh, they remind, or uh, I remind them of the show, or vice versa. Uh, what else have I been doing? Dark Souls 3. A lot of Dark Souls 3. Don't talk about anything. I've been spoiler free. Okay, I will not talk about anything to do with Dark Souls 3. The vast amounts of non-fire. Non <laughs> <laughs> it's a basic premise. Nothing's on fire anymore. <laughs> yes, but the, uh, the videos of it have already come out. Or apparently you can get armor that does damage and you roll into people. That's so hilarious. There have been like, whole well, like, groups of people who just like someone like invaded them and all they do is just roll into them. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I need, I should start looking out for that. It doesn't make any sense for my build, but <laughs> I'm pyromancer, like hardcore pyromancer, like still have an axe. I went from the hand axe to the battle axe and then fire. That's what I'm doing. It's fun. Until I ran into a place where everything's on fire already and then I'm kinda screwed. Only a few of those. Yeah, well, it's it puts a bit of a lie to the whole nothing was on fire anymore. Well, I mean, you know, it's Dark Souls. Nothing's true and nothing's false. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, everything's... Everything in this specific area is on fire, so I do no damage. There are actually a couple of enemies where my fireballs literally do zip. Nothing. And then my fire-imbued axe does, like minimal, I like may as well do negative damage, it's like, so tiny. Just walk up and sounds like... What's that? Just for that place. Well, my, uh, weapon use stats are like, nothing, because it's, I've just been focusing on the fire. In fact, I specifically made a couple weapons with certain enchantments that give them no scaling, so I didn't have to worry about strength or dexterity at all. And none of this is spoilers, because all of these mechanics have been in every single Dark Souls game, so shut up. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't see it in one or two, that's your fault. <laughs> so yeah, that's been my last two weeks, is tech problems and Dark Souls. What about you, Reaper? Um, nothing terribly interesting. I've just been working a lot on... Uh campaign stuff for the game I run as well as the Pendragon game I'm in Fun and Fancy How's that going for you so far? Um, pretty good My player's almost about to reach level 12 which is nice uh, None of them have died yet which to my chagrin is an issue Like they are up <laughs> against this guy who was incorporeal and had blink on him 
So he took half damage, and there was a time where they would 50% miss. They missed him three times out of 21 attacks. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Get wrecked. Yeah, you I was suck. like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's like, damn, man. Yeah, but no, they, they dealt with it very well, so, you know, good for them. That's the time when you say to the DM, eat it and give me my money. <laughs> well, they then released a, um... A demon? An almost godlike being from its prison. Uh, who was on their side, so, you know, it wasn't so bad, but... Roughly speaking, doesn't that sound familiar, Ash? No, because it's not on your side. Well, I'm I meant mostly releasing godlike beings from the prisons, which actually we did, what, seven times? Eight times? In the course of, like, two weeks. <laughs> it was, what have you been doing? Uh, dragons, man. Dragons. Mm, dragons are not quite godlike. Uh, in this game, they are, because it's all homebrew. <laughs> okay, then. But yeah, just that, and dealing with Pendragon stuff, which is usually like... I'm trying to marry more than one person, and that's a problem. Because everyone's fucking Christian. And in the game, that's important. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I feel like there is a reference to the show Vikings somewhere in there. Probably is. I'm playing a pagan, so I'm kind of a... Not so it's Christian literally person. the show Vikings. No. <laughs> I do have a wife that's a Viking, essentially. So she's also a warrior. So kind of, but um, this, yeah, this that's is more. This is literally the plot of Vikings. <laughs> You're getting close quite, to this because with every like, with every add-on, you get closer to the show. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I'm assuming King Arthur is not in Vikings. No, it's actually historically, it, historically pretty accurate. Okay, well then, you know, the fact that my brother actually, escorted Merlin across the, you know, English Channel is probably not going to be in there. Yeah, it's actually way before that, because that all happens at roughly, uh, I want to say 1200 AD. The, the Vikings happens around 750 to 780 AD. Okay. This, well, but the Saxons believe... had a direct influence towards King Arthur. Yeah, Absolutely, and this is man. we're dealing... still fighting the fucking Saxons, and they're really annoying because Saxon... there's like two twenty thousand of them, and you have to fight them all. Yeah, Saxons really had problem. Saxons had been in England for all of like two hundred years when uh, when Vikings happened. Like it's really early. Like Charlemagne has been dead only for one generation, and Charlemagne was. Really Actor. It's pretty accurate. We're just entering the year 502? Yeah, 502. 502? You mean the Roman yeah. Empire just fell? <laughs> uh, it fell pretty recently, yeah. Roman's kind of. Oh, that's so... way earlier than most uh, King Arthur legends. Well, this isn't a whole system and it yeah. operates like this. This is more you know, mythological than historical. Eh, well, I'm just saying, like, most of the King Arthur legends date him a lot later. But, eh, fair enough. I mean, yeah. the, the movie Arthur put him really in the Roman Empire, so... I don't think that would be inaccurate. It sounds... Because no, the Romans was... weren't really fond of upstart kings and all that. Uh, no, he was a, um... More of a mercenary. Oh, was... he, yeah, I mean, he was somewhere between mercenary and, and uh was a centurion or whatever but yeah it was like during the Saxon invasion of England actually where Rome is like just ba barely teetering on holding England no oh, that hasn't happened mainly because it's like because the legend you know you've got King Uther and all that yeah yeah anyway alright Chris how's Saxons. your week been <laughs> That was racist. Uh, spent a lot of time. I'm an Anglo-Saxon. It's fine. We uh, produced and ran an opera for like a week, so that was a lot of time. And then I finished the test build of my kitchen countertops, so now it's on to the real thing, which is cool. Oh, nice. And uh, I don't know. I've been playing a whole lot. Uh, a little bit of Kingdom Hearts. A little bit of Switch. One. Uh, two. I'm replaying two. 
I've been doing the replay of the first one. Oh, cool. I did that a little bit ago. Oh, Wait for it's fun. to come out, because it's got pushed back again. I don't think it's ever actually going to come out. Are they uh, Duke Nukem it, it's, you think? <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. Every, every, the last I heard, they were they didn't want to put uh, KH3 and Final Fantasy 15 out too close together because they were afraid people couldn't afford both, which is, you know, probably legitimate reasoning, but I've been waiting for like 10 years now. Come on. Yeah. So yeah, literally. I mean, I don't know if that's a legitimate reason. Like, oh, they might not be able to afford it. But if you put it out, then it's there, and they can buy it when they can. That's why every yeah, single game true. ever comes out between September and November. There's <laughs> also that. A little bit. It's this weird. Like, I don't mind it when games are sporadically spread. But there's probably some weird business decision behind it. I knew they like to release them later in the year because of Christmas. Yeah. The other part is that want it. hopefully they're delaying it to make it better. That is rarely it. true. <laughs> yeah, that's... I've seen that actually been true for maybe like four games, and one of them is only just about to come out. That's Uncharted 4. Um... But yeah, besides that, it's usually something is going horribly wrong in corporate. The developers are bashing their heads against the desk, like, why? Just let us make it. Or it's something like Konami's firing their head writer on Metal Gear Solid or some shit. Yeah, that was a great idea. Not. That was an awful idea. <laughs> and that then they you. wouldn't even let him like show up to accept awards and stuff. It's like, that's man, just... Great. Yeah, that's just bad people. That's not even bad business, that's just being a bad person. <laughs> Whoever made that decision. And finally, Jake. How's your week's been? Not bad. Um, just trying to stay busy. What little I can do around here, around the house. I have about three other games. One of which I'm running. Um... My players continue to be a pain in my side. Killing things and bringing things back to life as zombies that really should not be zombies ever. <laughs> I don't want... I, Res a dragon? No, I mean... Like, I didn't think they'd go so far as to... Okay, it's a pirate campaign. I think I may have mentioned. And these guys have killed this... Um, it called? Wasn't it a shark or a kraken or something? No, no. This one is a... They call it something called a jungle creeper. It's a huge-sized plant. And they raised it as a zombie and are now using it as a crane system for their boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. You did mention that. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> I am so not happy about that. Can you um, even raise a plant creature from Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can. As it turns out, the only things you can't <laughs> are constructs, more undead, and... Uh, Anything that uh, banishes when you kill it. So you can't recycle undead? No, no you can't. No, no. They so, destroyed one. So needless to say, they're going to have a lot more undead thrown at them. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you can raise oozes either. You just make oozes everywhere. That is true. See? This is why you, you, you give good advice. Other than that, um, a friend of mine tried to start a 5th edition game and I tried to stomach it but I ended up walking out on the first session. I just can't. It, no. no. <laughs> I have no reasons that I wish to discuss at this point, but I, I just can't do, I can't do 5th edition. Uh, what was we? What was that thing we said in the first, that got into the first highlights about 5th edition? I, I don't know. Just shooting spells infinitely. <laughs> I believe it was. Oh, that was me talking about uh, 3.5 Warlocks and that the similarities between Spellcasters in 5th edition, because they kind of can do that too. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, especially Warlocks in 5th edition, where it's just... Uh, Eldritch Blast. One, yeah, Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast, which is a 60-foot touch attack that can be doubled in range at the right build. So well, it's it not just... a touch attack. 
Is it not touch? I thought it was touch. There's no such thing as touch attacks in uh, Yeah, Five But e. you can attack using your charisma somehow. Oh, well, yeah. either way. It was like you could turn into an infinite infinite use sniper blast. Essentially, that, uh, someone yeah. turned, Someone on, um... Uh, what was it? The West Marches turned it into just an artillery system, basically. Longbows are better. <laughs> mm. So yeah, that's what's been that for the most part. Well, I was able to fix the capture, so I can actually go ahead and hit the ground running. Yay! We can play now. I'm starting to really enjoy that skull up there. I gotta do something with that skull when that thing first pops up in the highlights. <laughs> So, oh, the Joe Breaker skull. Yeah, no, jaw cutter. <laughs> As you guys ended last week, I do believe you're just on your way to the Fletcher. And uh, yeah, I wasn't too yeah, sure about you, Hook. When have you made your way back to the group yet? I think you were just leaving. Pretty much. Yeah, I'd like um. I did my thing, I left my scimitar behind because I pretty much not gonna use weapons. So. And then I was looking for the party. I think you said they were somewhere in the area, so I find them. Yeah, you got you just ran into each other, I think that's how we ended. Yeah. yeah. When when you find us to say, Oh, oh Quinn and I, like throw a, a pretty heavy pouch at you. There's your uh there's your slice. I probably don't Enjoy. catch you with my nine decks. Oh, man. It hits you in the chest as it just pitter patters to the ground. I'm like, oh. Bend down, pick it up. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, yeah, 500 gold pieces. Enjoy. Do as you wish. Really? Wow, oh, okay. Yeah, thanks. we, uh, we sure. kind of struck. Oh, well, we struck gold. Uh, you remember that giant sword in the sewer? Stony one? Yeah, the one I jumped over the uh, crocodile for. It was the river the crocodile came later, but it's... Oh, well, you know, memory's a little foggy then. I was a little uh, distracted by said giant sword. Yeah, I was totally right in grabbing that. Because, uh, A, it could have made our fire here into an unstoppable tank of fury and destruction. But instead we sold it for a crap load of gold. I'm okay with both of these outcomes, so... Alright. Yeah. And um, now so we're... I guess you made a decent amount of money. So, uh, wrestling seems to have its nose stuck in the book. Always. <laughs> he found a library. He's quite excited. Oh, really? Great. Um, yeah. As it turns out, I'm actually looking for a book. Now, so. Oh, what book? Uh, I don't know the name of it, but it's written by. I hope it pulls out like a. Thing of paper or something. It's by what's this face? What is this odd name or pseudonym or something? Shelly Silvermean. Shelly Silvermean? Something like that. Hmm. I'll keep my eyes open. I mean, what are you reading now, Raceland? I forgot to take notice. Just my own spell book. Yeah. What about the other book you got? Not re <laughs> okay, so your spell book's also a newspaper? <laughs> <laughs> With my own times. I gotta keep, you know, re-upping and... Oh, oh. Load. It, sure, however you do magic, that's, that's fine. magic thing to you, but it would take years and we don't have that kind of time. Okay, sure. Anyway, we're on our way to the Fletcher, grab some ammo, and possibly some better equipment. Well, you sure, um, to the Fletcher. I'm off to a magic shop. Oh, well, fine. I think I'm off with... to a Fletcher. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go with rest. I need some magic stuff, I think. All right, cool. Yeah. So have fun with your Fletcher stuff. I intend to. Sharp pointy objects! Ugh. Uh, <laughs> just don't say it so ominously. <laughs> Did I already give you the, uh, what, 20, 30 gold to re-up for me as well? 
Uh, I don't I think know. I marked it off on mine. It's like one gold per ten bolts. I don't think uh, was, it, it was. It was thirty. I mean, just in case, because you know, things. Um, let me mark it down here. Thirty GP for wrestling ammo. Okay, cool. Sweet. And did you, uh, you mark down your 500, Oakland? Is it just flat 500, nothing? Yeah, 500 gold. Boom. Oh, and I, um, did I get him something? Did I buy him something I was going to give him? Armor? Yeah, studded leather armor. Yeah, I threw the studded leather. Oh, thank fuck. I'm still wearing this goddamn hide on me. Yeah, I know, right? Also, you probably should sell it just saying. Well, I have to give it back, because otherwise I just... Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Cool. So, so I'm, I basically just, you know, go somewhere, change out of my armor, and then it's like, oh my god, I can move it 30 feet. Yes! Hey, fabulous. We need to talk about fixing that for me, by the way. Moving on. Because this thing's kind of heavy. I mean, it feels way stronger. It's kind of heavy. All right, so as you guys converse and separate, let's head off with Hoquin and Ryslin first as the two of you walk in in opposite direction trying to uh, basically divine your way to a quote-unquote magic shop. Okay, do we see any... We don't just uh, divine our way. We just say, hey, any magic shops to the nearest random yeah. person to see. Look for any uh, townsfolk or guard or anything around. If the place is entirely deserted, I'd like to a spot check. You know? oh, there's definitely people around. Just have to right. interact. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll just, go up to... Yeah, first person we see, hey, would you point us to the nearest magic-y type place? That sells things. Hmm. Magic shop. Um. Huh. There was one on the corner near Hyde, but. Uh. uh there was a. I think it was a witch hunter. It was more than a fortnight ago that, uh. Went in there and, uh. Carted out the owner. Why? I'm not too sure. I, I think the fuzz was that the owner was doing some dark magic stuff. I, I don't know much about magic myself. I, I actually just worked the farms. Fair cop. Um, I. They wouldn't have to be like a magic bar or something, would they? You know, magic users get together, have drinks, throw spells around or something. Uh, I know there was this one fancy bar that uh, a lot of the smarter folk go to. I think it's somewhat of a... Actually, I don't even think if it's a bar, because, you know, they sell that fancy wine stuff. And normally they hold a lot of dragon chess competitions there, so that'd be the place to go <laughs> if you ask me. Hmm. Well, hey, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah. And I'll give him a silver. Gee, thanks, man. Hey, help should always be reported. You take care now. <laughs> you too, man. This is how we get the people oh, in the yeah. city behind us. We just pay them all. <laughs> I've done this. Like, most, most campaigns, I don't even, like, worry about having copper or silver. It's just like, this person helped me? Here, take all of my silver. Just take all my change. Take all my change. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as that finished, and you guys are pretty much in the street, and you're on, like, mental isolated bubble that you guys can talk to each other freely. And no one's really paying attention to you guys. Sure. Uh, I'll uh, ask Bryson if he knows what the hell a dragon chest is. <laughs> I thought he said dragon chess. Either one. <laughs> Do you know what either of those are? No, man, I've been here for like a week and a half. 
I don't know. Dragons are magic, right? Uh, yeah, I suppose. It'd have to be, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right. Do you learn so anything if... useful from your trainer? I was thinking about going and seeing mine soon. Uh, yes, no, it's hard to really explain. That seems always the case with druids. Well, she's concerned, and I think she'll try and help, but she didn't really tell me exactly what she'll do. She likes to be kind of, you know, vague and mystical, you know. Okay. Oh! But, um, oh yeah, she's, um, she's gonna train up over and maybe fix his teeth issue. Uh, so he's not gonna be around for a while. Uh, That's sorry, cool. I know you liked it, and he liked it. But... Yeah, sad, but that grill was fucked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a little. Um, so yeah, I thought it was best for him to do that. Okay. Well, listen, I almost forgot. We so we went to the library, right? And right, library. She had so many books. It was fantastic. Anyway, <laughs> right, any anything good? She was actually buried in some. It was hilarious. But, oh my. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she likes muscly people, and somehow not me. I don't know how that's possible, but whatever. That's not the point. The uh, point is, I mean. I kind of get it. Well, uh, not the point. Stay on focus. <laughs> I found, or rather bought from her, a special book. And I'm going to give it to you because it seems like you could use it. I haven't opened it yet. I, I haven't really looked at it too much. I don't know if anything will happen, but here you go. And I hand him the book with the lock. Okay, okay. take the book and just grab the like... book for him. <laughs> They're bound with pages. Um, it was, it, I think I remember it was older and uh, one of the dustier tomes in there. And it's got like a, a locking mechanism, like a fold lock mechanism over where, you know, opposite the spine. Yeah, I get what you mean. Um, well, thank you, Bryson. Uh, you sure you don't want to keep it? I mean, you probably spend money on this, so... Yeah, no. I think you could probably make more use of it than I could. And that's what books are for. <laughs> True enough. Um, so I'm going to take a look at it and, like, you know... It's his title, things like that. I actually can't seem to remember the exact title I gave for it. Me either. I literally wrote down Druid Book. Well, that on you. <laughs> Good one. You know what I, yeah. I somewhat remember? Is that I'm pretty sure it's written by the guy he's looking for books written from, and that's... Yeah, it totally is. Yeah. Yeah. Probably is, yeah. No, I, I remember that specifically because I laughed about it. I can't recall what it was called, but yes, the title. Yeah. It was that like was the, the valley thing. of your soul or something weird. I don't remember but yeah, I guess I'll I'll read that and I'll be like, oh, interesting. And I guess I'll just unlock it and take a look inside. The soul of the quivering leaf. I don't know. I made that up. But, oh, you know, I, I see, remember. I it, it was the forest in you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's why I didn't even look at it. <laughs> see, I was totally right. You know, it's the forest within you. That's the name of the book. Alright, so as you go through the book and start reading it, actually you start getting entranced into the read. It gives you a lot of information about the area around this mount, including the valleys and further on into the Black Forest to the Nom South and to the east the where was it my notes are all over the place did I happen to tell you guys anything about where the elves are yet? the elves? The forest, I believe Oh, yes. Yes. I was just making sure that I did. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. The Amber Forest is where the uh, elves were and uh, bandit. No, 
Was it bandits or goblins? I know one of the other was goblins. Goblins, because that's yeah. what we were going to go do next while we were yeah. waiting for the guy to get back. Yeah, it tells you yeah, goblins was the next thing. More about the Amber Forest and actually how to reach one of the settlements towards Amber, Amber Forest. Yep, found my notes on it. Goblin ambush on the road, Amber Wood, 1200 gold, one day away. Remind me, how long did we have for that uh, the guy to come back? About a week. Okay. And through your read, you also come up to near the... Because you guys are just talking... Or you're just reading while Riceland's just, I guess, walking. We're probably, like, walking side by side, both with books out, like... Yeah. <laughs> Nerd! Nerd! But once you reach near the end of the book, he starts, or the author starts talking about where to find his second volume once it comes out. Oh. He mentions that you can find it in a seafaring village to the west of here. Okay, seafaring village to the west. How vague a thing is that, that he knew where the book was going to end up? True with Magic, things, man, dude. I'm telling you. Magic. Actually, this is more of a wizard thing. Go to this thing and you'll find another thing. Yeah, that's true. Anyway. Um, so yeah, Hopin finishes up the book. Well, and he's like, Ryslan, you are correct. Yeah, apparently. Um, <laughs> this is an interesting book, but apparently there's more of them. So... Oh, there's always more books. <laughs> True. Oh. <Nerd. laughs> um, when you get to the very back of the book, you see a sigil inscribed on the back of it. Okay. And we have to freehand it. Which means it's gonna look epic. <laughs> I expect to Not see always. it. I expect to see it at the next art show I go to. Just realized, was, just realized wizard hits his hands the like, drew in a book. Why are the pages stuck together? <laughs> now it's wizard to the druid. Hi. Is that what we call it these days? I like pie. Oh, do you like pie, Jake? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So it, it's oh, that's why you said pie. It's literally pie. I thought you meant it as to why the stuff was stuck together. It's a it's no. a com, it's a comma it's a comma and an apostrophe under an umbrella. So pie with a stick. Basically. Oh, it's there. I wasn't even looking at. Yeah, no, that's why I was confused. Like, why is why pie S sticking the pages uh, together? Kind of. It looks very Japanese or something. Uh, it's Ash. Get used to that. I don't think Ash is Japanese. Are you Japanese? No, he he appreciates Japanese culture a lot. Fair enough. From what I okay. from what I've seen, um, keep that in mind that it kind of looks like. You know, one of those stone hinge things. And a pie. The line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, yeah. So, they're so, like, yep, Ryslin, thank you very much for the book. Also, the code uh, is 3.14. <laughs> mm. uh, unfortunately, this isn't quite what I'm looking for, but it might put me on track to what I'm looking for, so... Again, thank you. Appreciate it very much. What language does he hey, use? No uh, I speak Druidic, Common, and Sylvan. You know that this speak? looks familiar to the Druidic symbol towards Sanctuary in the Valley, but it's off. Of how? 
You can see Sanctuary, but the rest of it that would be towards the valley seems to be off. It's like you can um, assume that it could be valley, but it, it's almost as if he spelled it wrong, or something like that. It's because the line is 3.14159 degrees off. <laughs> alright, alright. <stop. laughs> Enough with that. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Um, which I can really do about it, though. Uh, all right. Anyway, we were looking for a magic shop. So this right. time we're gonna to like find a guard. I think is a good time and ask about this this fancy inn place with dragon chests or chess, either one. Apparently they hold competitions, etc. So as you guys, <laughs> excuse me, hunt for a guard, switch over to Goliath and Fox as the two of you come up to. A building that has a uh, arrow crossed by another arrow on a sign hanging in front of the building. It looks rather simple and quaint. If you guys didn't know better that you're directed in this path, you would assume that this is just uh, somebody's home. So, I'm looking up at a sign like outside the shop. So what do you think? You think we found the blacksmith? Fletcher, not blacksmith. I'll it's being sarcastic. Yes. <laughs> You're not from around here, are you? <laughs> and stroll on in merrily. As you do, you're greeted with an absolute abundance of bundles and bundles of different types of arrows, being from adamant steel, iron, copper, glass, just bound up into different like bundles in different areas and sold in like bulk. You see bolts, and in the very back of the room, you actually see like. 10 large different metals that looks to be ballista bolts just like sprayed out on the very back wall and then one guy that's also there looking to be um, separating different bowstrings on a very flat wooden table as he arcs his head up and it's like ah welcome great things I could lie, I think I'd use one of those things as throwing spears. Like, <laughs> gesturing up to the ballista bolts in the back. Already sick of your jokes. <laughs> Keep it up and I'll throw you. Not sure what the tactical use of that is, but okay. So, so anyway. It's actually quite good. I... The thing you can do, get a feed for it. Like, I'm vaguely familiar. It's how one of my characters died, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I now address the, the shopkeeper. Alright, so I'm in the business of crossbow bolts, and to actually wouldn't be adverse to seeing your selection of light crossbows. We got heavy crossbows or light crossbows I'm currently um touching up right now. I had a issue earlier this week that well, let's just say that uh a section of light crossbows is a little bit of uh out of commission currently until I make more. Right. Would you happen to have a timeline on that? Well, if you're looking for one immediately, I can drop my other product or projects and work on that. Depends on if this is a personal project or you're just looking to get one. Don't mind the time. 
It's more I'm seeing what my prospects are for upgrading. I have a just a standard run of the mill light crossbow, but I found that I might be in need of some more effective gear without necessarily going up to a heavier grade. If you get what I mean. He looks you over and looks over your friend as he then turns back to you. It's like, you looking to hunt something bigger than a human? More like I'm very aware of the possibility of that happening is more likely than not these days in my line of work. It's happens to be half hunting, half self-defense in very strange circumstance. But it's it's already happened multiple times and I'm just getting tired of well things fly into the creature and then the creature not caring. If you get what I mean. Well, depending on how deep your pockets are, I might have something that you could use. Well, it's not particularly light, but it's lighter than a heavy. He says how light? as he goes behind the calm, the wooden table, as you hear him ruffling through something, as he pulls out what looks like a crossbow, but a different shape. It has more of a bulb up feature as it has actually three separate like bows in it. Okay. So sit on table. Is this now would I would would I know as uh reliably, accurately? Oh well this baby can shoot. I haven't had an issue with it yet being able to shoot within the distance of a regular crossbow. It's not quite there as a longbow, but it got pretty good distance wise. I see. Hmm. Question for you. You said this was a prototype, correct? Yes. How is it possible for you to say take this general concept and then notch it down? Say maybe take one of the bows off it, maybe just a double shot, but in the, at the same time cut the weight by a lot. I mean, as it stands right now, this if my companion here would be so interested, would be something he could probably put to quite a bit of use. Uh, me, it's just simply outside of my caliber. He turns I need to be light you when you say that. I see. Hmm. Question for you. You said this was a prototype, correct? Yes. How is it possible for you to, say, take this general concept and then notch it down, say, maybe take one of the bows off it, maybe just a double shot, but in the, at the same time cut the weight by a lot? I mean, as it stands right now, this... If my companion here would be so interested, it would be something he could probably put to quite a bit of use. Uh, me, it's just simply outside of my caliber. He turns I need to be light you when you say that, Goliath. Um, Fox, out of, out of character, real quick, you are aware I spent every bit of the allowance you had, you gave me, and this would be digging into your pocket at this point, right? Yeah, but I might possibly have more money coming my way. I'm just opening the option for you, and it does, and it's not even ready yet. So you know. With respect, I tend to I tend to stay away from crossbows myself. 
Thank you, though. Yeah, that's fine. If it were three shots, it's less likely you'll entirely miss. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if you want to stay where I'm coming from, coming from, I am the type that needs to remain very light on my feet, constantly moving. Um, this type of thing, I yeah, it would unfortunately weigh me down. Although I very much enjoy the concept of it. As you're saying this, he's just like rubbing his um, chin. As you added in the concept, as he's starting to digest it more. It's like, actually, if you lower up here. Oh no, it won't work. Actually, maybe we can help each other out. I've oh. also been thinking about doing a new model based off of a. This one's more of a iron and wood based, but I do know of another wood that I was possibly going to do this with that, and the over, overall scheme would make it much lighter. I just don't yeah. have access to that wood. How much lighter, you think? I, I, honestly, what at I'm looking at right now... At least cut it down by half and you would still have the same power. Half, so six pounds. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of the weight's coming from the iron, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I can tell that much. Six pounds... Huh. Uh, okay, so what would you need to obtain this wood? Like, what would need to happen? You would just have to bring it here for me and give me about, uh, I would say, depending on when you bring it, two, three weeks tops, and I can make it for two, you. Three weeks. Two, three weeks. Uh, what type of wood? Right, I need at least 20 pounds worth of dark wood okay uh yeah you have any ideas on where i could go to get access to this resource whether through economic forest or... of it to the south here oh. sure. it's literally called the dark wood i thought that meant more like it's really it's actually dark but okay Fair we both. Like. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Uh, <laughs> it, very, it sounded like a very generic forest name, so I didn't think, give it any thought. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do on that. Um, however, for the moment, uh, do you have anything in ready access that would be looking about four pounds or lighter? Like I said earlier, I'm sorry, all the light stuff's due to an incident earlier in the week. Currently broken. Yeah, okay. Uh, what do you got for bolts for light crossbows? I need a refill. Bad. He laughs as he points to the left wall that <laughs> smorgensport of bolts. Yeah, that'll do. So I, I, I'll just walk over and start examining them. What am I looking at? So you know it's a bunch of different material types, so... That literally bolts galore. Okay. So... <laughs> what, um... The question you're more looking to ask is what materials can you afford? Yeah, that's probably a good point. What are materials that are still reasonable, but are probably an upgrade on your basic bolt. How much are you looking to spend? Um, hmm. I suppose if they're really good, maybe 50 gold on 20. I'll actually do you one better. 
Oh. He says as he gets this square looking magazine. As he hands it to you. It's like you can fill that up with any of the he points towards the iron, the wood and steel. It'll be fifty a pop for that cartridge. So how many would fit in the cartridge? You estimate around you can probably get around thirty in there. Okay, so my basic bolt was that made of is that the wood? I think a basic bolt is iron. Okay. Uh what would these stats be for um steel? It let's see steel bolts. Five steel bolts. All the different metals here that he says you can pick from, and you're wondering about steel. Well, I mean, I'm just wondering what the uh. Stats are for the uh, magazine. If I were to fill with 30 steel bolts, what would be the normal steel price and what does steel get me as opposed to iron? Well, average, uh, steel would be one gold. A piece? Mm hmm. So, 30. That's actually not, that's actually not a, um, a deal. Him. Then ask him what other metals he has. Okay. What's your next? What's your next three metals higher from steel? We have glass, adamant, out of dark wood. We have a cold iron. Ooh. As he pulls out, the deck, oh, it looks like we still have four silver. <laughs> oh. Okay. Silver are useful. So a yeah. cold iron. Well, cold iron only good against Fey. Um, How much do the, uh, the silver bolts go for? Cold iron is good for? against so many things. I, I know, but I'm talking... Well, as I said, you can fill that uh, cartridge up, and it'll just be 50. Oh, just anything. I thought you said yeah, he, he's oh. literally letting you have a grab bag here. Oh, 30, well. any, arrow, any of the bolts you want. Oh, this is actually okay. kind of amazing. <laughs> oh, okay. I heard the iron, wood, and steel, and I thought that was like all that was all the only ones that applied. Uh, I heard, I heard when he when we first came in here, some of the things he listed off. And yeah, this is a take the deal. Okay. Uh, so how many silver arrows do you get? Or silver bolts? Four. Four. Okay. Take those four. So I'm at uh, twenty six. Um, how many cold iron? He goes through, picking through, and comes out with eight. Eight? Take four of those. So, 22. Um, what are the pros and cons of adamantium versus glass? How does that work? If that, if he did say adamantium, then dumb. That's like the strongest metal that I know of in D&D. &D. Okay, it, what was it, that? It also costs the most. I know, I know that as a weapon, it has the potential to bypass a hardness of 20. Okay. And which is most things. I don't know as a bolt. Uh, I don't know if it would be armor or penetration or, or what the hell that would be. Do the same if Pierce DR. You could basically shoot bolts down, which would be fun, but it'd take a while. True, but what if, like, said bolt was used for, like, a Sunder attempt or something? Yeah, uh, armor Sundering piercing arrow. Sundering arrow is quite hard. Yeah. It's true, no, I don't but. Think there's anything like that. It's also, like, a full metal jacket crossbow bolt. <laughs> it's, it's also automatically must work. I imagine it would be much more resistant to breaking. Yeah, that's always nice. You know, um, if you want to retrieve a bolt, 
and and as opposed as glass to like the hollow points of crossbow bolts. <laughs> Basically, glass has the fragile quality, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Which, yeah, it breaks easily. I don't know if there's a benefit to it, to be perfectly frank. Well, Ash, what you got for me? So what, what are like one? the stats on these? Okay, what are the specs for glass? Like, what does glass give me as opposed to your standard iron bolt? He says glass, but as you guys look at it, it more looks like a rock than glass. And you turn to ask him, he's like, oh, well, I've yet to see any of these rust. Okay, well, that's nice. Anything else? Does it have uh, superior penetration qualities or... or uh, accuracy. Basically, these are arrows you could use against a rust monster without having a problem. Yeah, that's not a bad thing to have, actually. No, no, it didn't. Why don't you get stone bolts? Like, that's it. Uh, does, don't stone bolts weigh more, though? I'd imagine they would. Isn't that kind of the problem with this one? <laughs> okay, so I will take. See, what is that? That is 8.2 for 18. I want to take. Let's keep rounding this around so it's easy. I'll take four of the glass and the rest will be adamantine. So that'd be, he has that. Uh, does he have 18 adamantine? Yeah. Uh, he has two. Bolts. Oh, he's two? Uh, That's what he just said. Oh. So he's two. Adamantine. How many, how many more cold iron does he have? Do you have six total? I think he had 12. Of which one? Cold, cold iron. iron? The cold iron was 12. 12. There are a couple silver ones. I'll just take all of them if I need. The way I look at it, man. You don't know how often you're going to have access to these special materials, so just take advantage while you can. Well, no, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get the most of all of them. Um, how many glass? Glass, he has 24. Okay. Any other exotic materials for bolts? Other than adamantium, glass, he doesn't have dark wood, cold iron, doesn't have mithril. Silver and steel. Steel. Okay. Um, Which steel is almost unlimited. Right. And steel, as opposed to iron, is. What, does that have a plus on anything? or? None of these have a plus to anything. Your standard damage. bolts are steel. Yeah, it's just a matter of what you can use them against, really. The Adamantite one, or Adamantite, whatever. You, you can probably reuse the glass things against, good against anything that would cause rust. Um, cold iron's good against... I'm sure he could tell you a lot more Archery than me. Stuff. A lot of stuff, lots of fey, lots of magical things. Um, oh, okay. And steel. And honestly, if he's got 24 glass and the rest steel, maybe go half and half on whatever's remaining in that magazine. Yeah, I'm looking at... Um... 18, so I got a dozen without any glass, like with four silver, 12 cold iron, two adamantine. Um, so, yeah, 12, so six glass, six steel, and then maybe just get like another bundle or two. Nah, uh, yeah, maybe just get another bundle of steel after that at standard price. It's not even that much. Thank heavens for that. So as you go through your bundle, and now make sure that you have them all written down. Uh, yeah. Um, um, doing that now. Okay. And then another bundle of 10 steel, like as a standard bundle. All right, so as you select those, he's just sitting there smiling and nodding. As you finally show him your cluster and your cartridge, it's like, good. All right, so that'll be 50 gold. And... There's actually one extra cost. Oh? As he reaches out his hand, he's like, 
make me your solo Fletcher needs when it comes to anything that you need for Fletching. Given his given his assortment, I'd say that's easy. Yeah. You know, you don't get this kind of quality stuff. Plus, who knows down the line if if we get enough dark wood, you might be able to work a deal out with him for that. How about? Because I have one other interest I was thinking about. He starts to retract his hand. I was wondering if it's possible to learn a bit about this craft. I would like actually to learn how to create my own bolts. Obviously, if we do make some kind of deal, any surplus I end up with, I could outsource to you at a discount, obviously. But I need someone to train me, obviously. Well, the training wouldn't come cheap. Or free. I, I didn't think it would. Sure. I'm sure we could work something out. Alright. But I, until then, I, I would still like to be your sole means of fletching needs. Wow, would it feel like this? It's hard to pass up. So I could put out I'd, my hand. I'd have to agree. He shakes. Though, this little first down um, interaction, that was just for first meeting in good health. Next time we're going to have to do these in the right methods. I do confess a curiosity. Um, what incident were you referring to? Or, I don't want to, no, mind you, I don't want to offend the guy, but... I'm just curious at this point. Some could somebody break in or something? Or? It was some kid that lost control of his. I don't know. I, I think he was saying it was a familiar. It came through and it was eating all my crossbows. That's disturbing. Something you want. I mean, obviously you say it's some kid you know who it was, so it's not something for us to keep an eye out for for you. I already went through the proper channels and noted, um, All right. notified the constable. And I should okay. be in reimbursed within uh, hopefully this month. But yeah, I lost a lot of money through that. All right, well. Sorry to hear it. Couldn't hurt asking figure. Also, I don't believe I caught your name. I'm Fox. Uh, Eric. Eric. Alright then, Eric. Eric the Fletcher. As he shakes your hand as you guys make that deal, it's like, I'm glad to be your sole means towards fletching. I'm sure that will My make soul. a very profitable relationship together. Yeah, assuming your bolts keep me alive, it absolutely will. I think it's the... never mind. As he then turns to you and is like, I apologize that we couldn't find anything to your liking, but... if anything catches your fancy... In the future, I'll definitely come to you. That's what I'd like to hear. He smiles. As I'm now rearranging all my inventories so I have room for all these new crossbow bolts. As we're, as we're leaving, Fox, I might mention to you, you know, I'm probably going to need a wood-cutting axe, because I'm assuming you're going to make me carry the dark wood. You know, you're probably right. We should find a general supplier. Yep. Also, we really need a rope. I don't even care what kind or how or how long. We need some kind of rope. Cause uh, holy crap. Every adventure, good adventurer needs rope. Well, exactly. Yeah, it's useful. All right. So as you guys start to walk out, um, Fox is just rattling with the sound of new bolts in this cartridge. Oh, actually, before we leave, I also um, I pick up a uh, say a bushel and a half. Now, 
I got two bushels of um, steel bolts for uh, wrestling because he also needs a reload. He only forgot about that. Uh, what is that so come 20 gold out? worth? It's a gold uh, steel bolt. Yeah, I remember. But here I thought that's what the extra 10 was for. Giving you too much credit there, Rogue. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. The, um, yes. Alright, so all of their weight, yep, is normal weight, so it's a pound each. And then the cartridge, it uh, mitigates it down to 10 in the cartridge, I believe. So it's two pounds of ammo is what I'm carrying, and not, not counting wrestlings. No, it's a pound and arrow. Yeah, no, so you, you've got... You've got more than you can carry right now. I'm pretty sure. He's, he's, and... If it's a pound and arrow, and you just bought tw uh, let's see, 30, 50, and, well, actually, no, the, the 30 in the magazine metagates it down to 10, so you've got about 40 pounds and arrows on you, or bolts, or what have you, if I'm understanding him correctly. If you have 40, then yes, because none of them are half weight. Well, you had said the ones in the magazine weighed less, though, no? Right. They do. So, uh, so th th 30 of them. There must be huge bolts, then. It's usually a bolt weighs yeah, for a light, pounds. For light, yeah, for light crossbow bolts. Because, <laughs> yeah, normal bolts do weigh one pound for a 10-pack. for a ten pack. Yeah, I was going to say, that sounds a little high, but... Who am yeah, I? Looking at these um, materials... They look nice, but they don't look to be exquisite. That's going to be a problem we're going to have to solve. Eventually, yes. Because, I mean, I don't think it's very efficient for you to carry my ammo and be in the front. <laughs> no. It does I'll just ask the guy why his bolts weigh so freaking much? Why do they weigh ten times normal? Well, I mean, they're not even that many in a man scene, so I can't even say that he doesn't know how to work it properly. Maybe he doesn't, because there's only two of them. I know, maybe, but the glass, there's no excuse. I mean, if they were all dark wood, I forget if dark wood's lighter or heavier, but dark he's out... Lighter. But yeah, but he said he was out of that, so. So as you guys are walking out rattling. Another question. How's cold iron weigh more? It's iron just like normal bolts. It just cold, cold iron weighs doesn't. one sixth pound normally. Really? Yeah, there's actually not a difference. Yep. Yeah, adamantium oh, and cold iron actually weigh the same. They're a little more than steel, but not much. Yeah. But as you guys are walking out, the camera switches back over to Ryslin and Hoquin. As they're walking along, singing a song. No, please. Oh, I don't want to have to make a perform check. How about their love of books? Um, His love of books. Mine is a passing interest in books. A passing interest. Can we do, like, a gather information? check for oh yeah for you're already well, I mean that's why I said um, we just ask the guard because it's like if they yeah, are yeah yeah that's what you guys were doing last you guys walked towards the guard he directed you to a building called sky which right. is that's where okay. we're... not too far from here it's about a 20 minute walk and what do you say it's not too far from here it's about a 20 minute walk I'm what do you say, Hoquin? Shall we? Yeah. Not doing anything, so might as well. Cool. Get a lead in this, uh, this magic shop that seems oddly elusive. While, uh, while we're at the guard, uh, I'm just going to ask him if he, if he knows where to get potions as well. Potions? I believe there's a... Uh... There's a girl not far from here that uh, does alchemic stuff like that. 
Is her name Emily, by chance? Yeah, I think so. Fabulous. Thank you very much. <laughs> he nods. Alright, off we go to Sky. So you guys come across, um, come down after 20 minutes later to a building that has a more gecko roman like architecture with columns, a lot of whites, and actually it's one of the few buildings that actually has a sign with its name on it instead of just a symbol when it says sky. Hey, it looks like we're in the right place. Let's go in. Sounds like it, yeah. As you come in, it's a lot of marble, a lot of stone. It has a very still same like Roman looking or look to it. Waterfalls and ponds, people sitting next to them drinking out of tall glasses that look like wine glasses, and it's a very upper class type of establishment. Most of the people here look to be elven, an elven kind. Excluding that. Hey, what do you know? Nobles. I look like a half elf. Wrestling is an elf. We fit in just fine. There we go. Aside from the fact we are not fancy looking at all. Other than that, there's actually quite a few, just off of your um, general looking, to be people that are wizards as well that you've trained with before not necessarily had a relationship but you know of them do I recognize anybody by name I don't know do you it's something that you can actually just add on really okay um, so it's like it's there's a Essentially, a bar there. Essentially, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll walk up and uh, talk to the barkeep. It's a. You walk over to the barkeep, and you're taken by surprise as you see that her features look kind of similar to. Um, Oh, Quinn's, actually. I mean, that's not that weird. I look like a half elf, so. Uh, with actual green hair? It's not too oh, she's green hair, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't mention that. Yeah, definitely out of the normal. As she turns, it's like, Ah, welcome. What will you be drinking today? Or would you like to enter into the Dragon Test tournament? Dragon Test, you said? Chess. Dragon Chess. See, I told you, Hulk went chess. Yeah, you're right. Oh, well. I know. Uh, actually, beautiful, I was wondering if you had a line on where one might procure any sort of enchanted items, magical items... She smiles to that remark of beautiful as she puts her arm on the countertop. It's like, well, I might. Are you a member? <laughs> I'm a, just kind of like lightly lost. I'm a member of many affluent societies. To which are you referring? <laughs> 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 he says, smiling over the countertop, like a member of the gays. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even help myself on that one. But laugh if this one likes Hulk when instead. <laughs> uh, spiritually, perhaps at this current time, I have not had the opportunity. What he's saying is no. That's unfortunate. I could say that if you were a member that... Yes, you can have access to 
not many magical outlets, but unfortunately, she says, kind of retracting from the table. Or the bar, at least. Uh, is, can you tell me a little bit more about the gaze? How would one join? What do you do? It's a group of people that have shown to be exquisitely talented in the arcane arts and the mental arts. It's more of a society, to say the least. Well, then you've met the right elf. Yeah. Well, if you're looking to join, that's one of the reasons why the tournament's being held today. Actually, you know what? Hoakland's like, the rest not you too talented to join some society. Do better on your own. Yeah, but it, a little sport couldn't hurt. Okay, Fox, I'm going to go ahead and say this is revenge for us taking so long in the Fletcher. Now he's going to sit here and play chess, <laughs> play chess for the rest of the night. Uh, what time are the festivities? The first round of the tournament starts actually tomorrow. But if you would like to partake and enter, it's a 10 gold entry fee. Tomorrow? Uh, is it a round, like a round robin thing? Or does it just go from tomorrow onwards? Is it a round a day? No, it goes on tomorrow onwards. We'll be finishing up tomorrow. I see. I see. Um, okay, so on top of that, you don't uh, happen to know anybody who sells or deals in magical items? That hasn't been absconded by a witch hunter? Do you say that? Absolutely. She looks like she is about to say something as she then turns to Hoquin. That was an unfortunate affair. And... We, the gays, do not condone using the magical arts in such a manner. As her demeanor was a lot warmer to you guys, but it seemed to have chilled off after that statement. Yeah. Honestly, we agree. Obviously, there was something that that man was... a woman, I don't think we got her gender, was doing that was... Not in well, sync with the law. While I don't agree with all the laws this place has, guys seem to have a pretty good handle on things. So, regardless, something it was, uh, uh, poor taste, to say the least. No, you can't tiptoe around these to topics, basically. Those poor, poor children. Children, you say? Yes, the incident with Marthiel, the reason why he was taken by the witch hunter? Oh no, um, this wouldn't happen to be like some sort of kidnapping, would it, of several groups of children or something? No, it was more of a ritualistic sacrificing. He flayed them and cut them open and was offering them to some kind of dark deity. That's wow, terrible. I hope he's dead. After the wow, I hope he is dead. <laughs> no real children were, were harmed in the making of this campaign. <laughs> uh, this is not the first time I've seen something horrible happen to kids. I know, that's, yeah, why, that's, I why, that's why I asked if, you know, these groups... Mm. Well, well, at least he was good on the and he actually hang and hung at the gallows not long after the incident, so. And cremated, I assume? Of course. 
The Regent Witch Hunter mm -hmm. handled the situation quite promptly. Fair enough. But yes, we're looking to spend some of our hard-earned money on some things that might help us in future endeavors. Uh, if you could direct us to someone or a shop of some sort, that would be excellent. As to this chess tournament, probably have to explain the rules unless they're just as normal. Well, oh, it's very simple. You use your intelligence check versus their <laughs> intelligence check. And the first to ten wins wins the round. Or wins the game. First to ten wins, wow, okay. Oh man, I got that. <laughs> do you know? I do. You're all, if you just chain roll ones, I think you just lose. Well, mechanically speaking, ones aren't a lose, it's just you lose that necessary check. So, the entry fee goes to you? It goes to the establishment, yes. You would be paying to me, and then I would be submitting your name, or names. Are we having two entering? At least one, and I'll hand her ten gold. Ah, very good. It's, uh, uh Raceland. Keep mm -hmm. that in mind, beautiful. I'll try to. Yeah, I don't think I will be participating. It is not my... I have other things that I feel would be more important. Also, I'm not that smart. <laughs> so when she was going over the description, you were just like, yeah... Just not following it as a... <laughs> right, so it's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, I probably, I probably understand, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not too good at this. <laughs> just a, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could probably try it if I just roll nothing but net 20s. It's like, oh yeah, I'm the best wizard because I'm a druid. As for your statement before, it's been a lot harder for us of the arcane touched to get workings and establishments here after the um, incident. So I would say the ah, best means for you to get a foothold in what you need would become a member of the gaze. Understood. Anyone who perhaps doesn't do it in a shop, perhaps they just, you know, they have a bunch of stuff they're looking to get rid of, you know. I wouldn't have any say, but you are in an establishment with well fluent people. I suggest you mingle. Well, when it comes to the arcane, wrestling is much more limited than I am. As soon as she says that, do I see anyone who's uh, thoroughly imbibed? <laughs> well, haggle with a drunk person. Fair enough. Not drunk, no. They're too classy to really... Uh, Get two pissed drunk. Oh, please. Wizards have terrible fort saves. One of them's gotta be hammered. Not visibly. <laughs> They're visibly hammered. Oh my god, that could be a thing. They could be just a guy like passed out on the floor and visible, no one's ever known. <laughs> oh. Wizards. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, as you look around, they just look to be sipping. Some of them conversing with their table mates. And as you look around, this is the moment that uh, you get actually really surprised as your gaze falls upon a elf with a cigar in his mouth. Looking down, reading a book with a glass of wine in his hand. He looks 
extremely familiar as you catch wind of Yusuf. Yusuf? He's the night shift person at the uh, Inquisition office. Right. Right. Well, um... What do you think, Coaquin? Well, I think, um... You're probably better at this than I. You have more in common. I'll go for it. I'll just hang out here. I have a couple more things to talk about. Okay. Uh, so I'll yeah, go... I, I, sort of, I sort of whisper in his ear. It's like, if you want, I'll talk you up. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, I'll go over and stand at Yusuf's table. Say, hello. Mind if we sit? Sprout arches going alone. as he looks to you by yourself and looks to your sides like Weston <laughs> pulls out his toad. <laughs> You're right, my toad. Do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> as you say, do you mind if we sit when you come over there by yourself as he gives a arched look? The collective we, you know, spiritually... Sorry, I've been hanging out with druids too long and it's kind of messed with my mind. How are you? What do you want? Not so good, I gather. I want... I want, uh... Just to talk, a friendly conversation. So in other words, you want to waste my time. Straight to it then. I, I want to procure items. Magical items. He closes his book as he leans back in his chair. What makes you think that I would be in control of any? Or have the knowledge of some? I don't know. Basically a shot in the dark. Perhaps you know a friend. Who told you of it? Like I said, shot in the dark, I guess. So that other group, did they put you up to this? I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about. Who's wasting whose time now? Fine. We'll get to the point. Yes, I'm going <gasps> to get to... Uh, Possession yes. of a magic item that was stolen from me. Stolen from you? Yes. Which, but who, by whom? It's the owner of the Harpist Scroll. Another tavern, more of a brothel, really, and that's in the city. He stole an enchanted bottle from me. An enchanted bottle. It held many gallons of wine. <laughs> it held rusted oak. Probably the finest brewed beer that I've ever tasted in all my years. Okay. I'd look to retrieve it. So, my question is, how capable are you, wizard? The most capable wizard you've ever met. Trust me on that one. I've even got references. But listen, what are we talking about? You want to employ me? Sure, I can say that I can do this official. I can employ your services. I'll need a number. He looks at you unblinking as you say a number and it's like almost an immediate reaction. 25 gold. Take it or leave it. 
Uh, leave it. Thank you. Like I said, really important wizard. 25 gold is not worth it. He arches his brow. Fine. 75. 75 gold, maybe if it were on, you know, the other side of the tavern and you were in a wheelchair, perhaps I'd help you, but listen. <laughs> You say that, he say sighs that. and opens wow. up his book and goes back to reading. Fabulous. I would have taken the 75, honestly. That was pretty busy. Ah. Well, we're about, to do, we're about to do a job that's worth 1,200. And right. I have another yeah, item to sell much. that's roughly 700. Roughly. Yeah. Trying to prioritize. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh... I walk back over to Hoquin. Say, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go see Emily again. Oh, before you walk over there, you were talking to, or trying to talk to her by yourself. To me? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it's like, so, that's a very interesting coloration you have in your hair there. Is that natural? She brings a hand up to her hair as she um, pushes up against the bank, so it's like, oh, yes, yes it is. Moku will then say, in Sylvan, Killerin? My brother, hmm, as she says in Sylvan back. Yeah, how can his eyes go wide and he's like, Just kind of mouths for a second. He's like, um, I didn't expect to see one of my own kind here in the city. Troubled times come for troubled actions, I suppose. There's not much one can do without their memory. You as well? Nothing. Not much, no. Are there any others? Like us? No, well, yes. You happen to be my first. Interesting. Well, I'll be honest, it's quite comforting knowing that well, there's at least someone like me here. I was rather afraid I was alone. But what are you doing here? And Hogan kind of gestures around. There's a particular man that I really need to find that frequents this area often. I don't know why, but I feel like I knew him in my past life. Yeah, it's very important. Um, I know we barely know each other, but if you need help, I freely offer it. She looks at you uh, and nods. Like, I'm glad to hear it. I hope you do well with yourself, brother. Don't forget the ten percent up charge. What? No. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, I think I think my friend's a bit sweet on you. Uh, is there any chance between you and him? She looks back over at him, just as it looks like the conversation's going south with um, Yusuf. Yeah, she looks back over to you. I really don't have attraction to anyone, particularly. Take it as a yes. <laughs> 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 we 
rapists in the same oh, way. No, we're not together. rapists here. Very, very <laughs> sure we're not rapists. <laughs> Fair enough. Is this just a general thing, or did you got here, or what? Because I know I don't have that issue. Oh, it's attraction. Yes, I mean, you're rather attractive. Many people. Very so subtle. you're the only one like me. Until I find out more about this person. The reason why I have a feeling like he had me trapped. No, I have no Did attraction. You know? I have no attraction for anyone. No, well, listen, um... I'm Hoquin. Um, if I'm in town, you contact me at the Hunter's Guild. If you ever need help, if you ever need some druidic magic, I'll help. If there's apparently only two of us here, we should stick together. My name is Meryl. I'll make sure that I can... I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Mm. It's around if you this. remember anything, yeah, if this man has trapped you, he's got to pay for that. It's around this time that um, Rasslin comes back or comes up to you. <laughs> you see us this, like talking in Sylvan. Like, ah, Rasslin. Uh, any dice? No, not dice. <laughs> Pretty much a lost cause. <laughs> oh, no, not dice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, get anything or? No, uh, just a sour man looking to offload his grocery shopping. Really? That's it? Pretty much. Didn't care for him. Kind of a dick. You want to go see a librarian? <laughs> <laughs> you have a really odd way of segueing in conversations. I don't know if you realize that. <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, like Hogan turns back to, um... Marilyn, was it? No. He added in a little more at the end. Meryl. Meryl, okay. Yep. Turns back to Meryl and sort of gives her a nod and he's like, um, yep, I think we're good. We have things to do. It was a pleasure talking to you, guys. Um, Two nods. Take care of the wizard boy. I'll keep him safe, don't worry. Just give her a wink and walk off. <laughs> Yeah, so as we're talking off, uh, talking off, walking off. Oh, you um, seem to be talking off, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Reistlin, um, do you speak Sylvan at all? Uh, I speak Elven. So, no. Alright, I need to learn you some Sylvan. Um, to learn me Sylvan? You need to learn it. It's a good language. Don't joke. Okay, I'll look into it. Anyway, um, so her, you liked her? You seem to like her. Like I said, man, prophetic need to be balls deep in everything. Alright, that's very inappropriate. <laughs> Except trees. Listen, I'll leave the trees to you. It's okay, you can have them. <laughs> you are a very odd wizard. <laughs> Actual sexual deviant. Riceland. Yeah. Like, honestly, if this is how you act, I'm kind of scared to see what happens if you regain your memories. No. But, honestly, I'm, I'm going to tell you, she's kind of a no-go unless you help her out with something. Not help her out in that specific way, huh? <laughs> yeah. Like, if, if, if Riceland goes, oh, like, then it's like, no, not like that. <laughs> Listen, it's an actual important thing. 
Hopefully. She's kind of like us. She's lost her memory as well. Oh. Apparently, it's some, someone in very important around here that she thinks uh, did something to her. If you could help out in that, you probably earn big points. Well, I don't know if I told you. I told the fox. The constable, maybe not such a great guy after all. No shit, really? Yeah. That that was sarcasm, last time. Like I get yeah, it. I know. I messed I just it. Did. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he is the constable, so there's not much we can do about it. Oh, Kill him. There's plenty we can do. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> it's when he's alone in bed. Oh, now who's the fucking deviant? <laughs> and with that, <laughs> we'll go on our first stuff. break. <laughs> That is the best ending line. (laughs) (laughs) Now he's a sexual (laughs) deep. Oh, man. Alright, so that'll be the first break for the night. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, We're going to be back in about 15 to 20 minutes. So, stand up, use the restroom, do all that fun stuff, and we'll see you guys soon. Ciao. Actual sexual deviant, Riceland. Oops, I have